<laughs> By the way, we were just talking about me getting <laughs> eyebrow tattoos. <laughs> well, welcome to another Dent Free Guys Live. We're here every week for you. Just one of the many platforms that we help the LGBT community live fabulously but not fabulously broke. How much money do you need to save for retirement? <laughs> exactly. You have no, no fucking, fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about today. All week long, we've been talking about late stage retirement planning. What do you do if you haven't started preparing for retirement and you're 40, 50, or 60 years old? On Monday on DebtFreeGuys.com, we published nine steps that you can take to start preparing for re retirement, regardless of how old you are. And then on Tuesdays, Queer Money, we talked with Teresa Mears from Living on the Cheap, and she gave us some great advice on how to prepare for retirement as well. So today, we're going to talk about specifics. You can't get to where you want to go if you have no idea where you are or where you want to go. Right. So we want to remind you that uh, this is a series, so check out the hashtag DFG Live if you want to catch all of the Facebook Lives that we have done that are helping you prepare to be financially secure. This week, as John mentioned, we're going to help you with some specifics. We're going to help you calculate your magic money number, specifically for your retirement. And then we have provided you a late retirement checklist. So click the link above to get that checklist uh, so that uh, you can then calculate and determine what retirement is going to look like for you. Exactly. So. Mine and David's goal is to help build a stronger queer community so that we can withstand whatever comes our way, whatever tax increases or decreases come our way, whatever health care scares come our way. Um, and we believe that one of the strong pillars of a strong queer community are financially strong individuals and allies so we can take care of whatever comes our way. Yep. Uh, so please spread this message, like, comment, and share below so that we can reach more LGBT people and help them become financially independent. If you have any questions throughout tonight's show, please uh, add them to the comments below and we'll be sure to answer every single one before we wrap up. And then as David said, this is a series, so please search for hashtag DFG Live and you'll be able to get every, everything we've done in this series so far and what we'll do in the future. Right. So first of all, what does retirement look like to you? <laughs> we hope that for most of us, this is what retirement looks like. We all have this dream of either laying on the beach or by a pool and enjoying our lives, relaxing because we've worked very hard to be able to basically enjoy the rest of our lives. And that's really what we want to make sure that you understand. What is it going to take? What kind of work? How much money do you need to be making? How much money do you need to be saving in order to do that? So we've created a, a seven-step process here that'll help you calculate how much money it is that you need. I'm going to walk you through that process really quick here. First of all... This is math, so <laughs> beware. <laughs> yep, exactly. So the first step we've taken here is we basically ask the question, what amount of money do you need today to live comfortably? And we're using an example person here. This person's name is Jason. Jason makes... Uh, uh, an average amount of money and he feels like he needs to make or live off of about $56,000 a year. So that's why we came up with this first step, this example number. Jason thinks that he needs to be making about $56,000 a year. So in order for us to figure out what amount of money Jason needs to be setting aside, we take that above number, that $56,000, and we multiply that by 0.75 and we get $42,000. Now, you might ask yourself, why are we multiplying it by 0.75? Why are we multiplying it by 0.75, right. David? So in retirement, most calculations have proven that the average person in retirement spends about 70 to 80% of the amount of money that they do before retirement. So if you're, if you're thinking about retirement, think about how much money you need today and then take it, multiply that by 0.75 or 75% to give yourself a rough estimate in today's dollars how much money you would, be, you would need in the future. So what that's taking into account is when you stop working for somewhere, someone else, typically you have some uh, recurring costs that 
either are decreased or eliminated, such as you don't need to put as much gas in your car. Um, you're not going to need to, you're not going to be driving back and forth as much, so your car insurance might go down. You might even not replace your car for several years so you won't have car payments yeah. um, because you don't have a, a car to show off at work. Right. Another example is 13% of people who are age 70 and older still have a mortgage. So the vast majority of people pay off that mortgage before or before they retire. So that's another reason why your costs go down in retirement. Typically. Right. Exactly. So let's take that number that we came up with, that 42000 and let's continue this process. So we've taken this 42,000 and the third step here is to take this, this amount from step two and multiply it by 25. And the reason why we multiply it by 25 is the assumption here is that it, it, if you multiply your income by about 25, that is the amount of money that you would need to start with in retirement. Basically what they're saying is if you live off of 4% of that total amount each year and you get a 4 or 5% return on your investments, your, in, your principal should stay the same. So that's why we came up with this number here, this number of $1,050,000. Remember, we're going back here. We're talking about Jason, who's making $56,000. He needs to make $56,000. needs to make $56,000. Then he's also um, reduced that by, to, by uh, 25%. So he's got the, the $42,000. Multiplied that by 25, so that's $1,050,000. That right there is an indication of how much money you would need to to have saved when you start retirement. But we're gonna take this to how much money you ne actually need to start saving. That's your magic money number. So here in step four, we locate the amount that you have in retirement. This is 38,000, in our example here, Jason has $38,000 saved. He needs to get to 1,050,000. So 38,000 would either be in a traditional or Roth IRA, exactly. a 401k, a 403b. Yep, exactly. So he has some savings. He started, but doesn't have very much saved. Remember, he's 38 years old. He's got $38,000 saved. So over the life of working, he hasn't saved a whole lot. He's kind of in that late stage game where he needs to figure out how he can pump up his retirement rather quickly. So, so we know he's got $38,000. He needs to get to a million fifty thousand. So what does he do next? Well, we take, then we want to calculate in step five, the years he has until retirement. So he's 38 years old. He wants to retire when he's 63. So there are 25 years until he's able to retire. So he's got 25 years and able to accumulate that $1,050,000. In step six, we wanna choose the interest rate that he would most likely achieve. Because he's of a moderate age, not necessarily too close to retirement, he's got 25 years to go, he's going to, we're going to select here an aggressive portfolio. The closer you get to retirement, the more moderate or conservative your portfolio would need to be, or how conservative you are as an individual, maybe you don't spend a lot of money, you could actually have a conservative portfolio and actually earn less in your interest that you get from your investments. So we've got the years he's, he needs to retire and then the, uh, the amount that he is going to earn in interest. So what do we do with all those numbers? How do we actually find that amount of money that you need? Well, I've got a little tool here. I'm gonna share with you my desktop and show you a website. This website is a has a compound interest calculator on it. If you notice on here, it allows you to plug in some numbers and calculate a future value. So what we've plugged in here is the $38,000 that Jason has saved. We've plugged in the 25 years that he has to go until he retires. Get pause. Um, they can't actually see the calculator. Oh, they can't? No. Oh, let's see here. There we go. No. Nope. No, I think if we can see ourselves, they can see us. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing a desk share, and for some reason it's not showing up.
All right. Well, I guess I'm going to go back to the camera here. Sorry about that. Um, but basically, what this uh, feature allows you to do, let me jump over here. Nope, we're still not seeing it, are we? No. Why don't you stay there so you can follow the follow along? But we'll right. just say where we got this calculator. It's the compound interest calculator on MoneyChimp.com. If you type in compound interest calculator on Google, uh, MoneyChimp, this particular calculator will be the first one likely that'll show up. All right. So on this compound interest calculator, what I've done is I plugged in the amount that Jason has in his current principal, the $38,000, the 25 years he has to go before he retires, the interest rate he's going to earn, which is 9%. I changed the uh, time at which the additions are made to end of each compounding period. Basically what I'm saying there is that he makes his contributions at the end of the year after everything has compounded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the amount that if Jason added nothing to it, the amount of money he would have. And that amount, that future value is $327,677. So that's a long way to go before Jason would be able to retire. He needs to save considerably more. So then what I do is in the annual addition amount, I start plugging in numbers and hit the calculate button to see how much it is that Jason would have to save to, in order to reach that number. Save each year, right? Yep, save annually what he would need to save each year to reach that $10,050. I'm sorry, um, $1,050,000. So uh, I've thrown some numbers in here and I'm getting kind of close and keep on calculating and I kind of land on a fairly close number. The amount is $8,550. And if Jason saves $8,550 each year in his retirement and gets a 9% return, in 25 years he will have $1,051,869. So what this basically says to us is that Jason, uh, let's see here, let me get back to the, there we go. Um, if Jason saves $8,550 in his retirement annually, he's going to reach his, his goal. So take that number, $8,550, divide that by 12, and rough, roughly, Jason needs to be saving about $700 to $750 a month in his retirement. That's a pretty steep number. But when you think about it, if you're investing into a 401k where you get, your, where you get some sort of employer match, then that number will be even less for you. And the more money you contribute to a 401k that is a traditional 401k, you actually reduce the amount you pay in taxes. So $750 based on your tax bracket doesn't actually have to truly be a $750 investment. Sometimes that can be as low as around $600 to reach that $750 if you're in a slightly higher tax bracket. Exactly. So that might all have sounded complicated because you couldn't see the calculator, unfortunately. We had a technical problem. But if you download the link, uh, the uh, worksheet above, the Magic Money Calculator and the Late Retirement Questionnaire and Checklist, this is all spelled out for you step by step, including pictures of the Money Chimp Calculator that we were referencing throughout. Yes. So it should be very easy for you to follow, especially if you're reading along while you're listening and watching us. Right, and there's a link in the uh, in that uh, PDF that you download to take you directly to the cal compound interest calculator. And, I, and I'll just say, it might you might think that nine percent interest is hard to get these days, but since uh, the '70s, the market has returned on average nine percent. Right. Um, that is, you know, some years have been better than others. Uh, some years certainly worse than others. But on average, that's what you're looking at. And the other thing that I would say is, in the article that we published on Monday about late stage retirement planning, the nine steps we provided, we talk about other ways to generate income, ongoing income, 
uh, in addition to just your in, uh, retirement investments, just stocks and mutual funds. Right, exactly. So one of the impo important points in that article is to start now. Yeah. In the example that we gave with Jason, he has 25 years to go. He absolutely needs to get started. The closer you get to, the re to retirement, the more you need to set aside in order to reach your goal. So we want you to start now. And start now by figuring out the amount of money that you need to save each month in order to reach your retirement goal. Exactly. So thank you for joining us for another Debt Free Guys Live. Again, please like, comment, and share this with, uh, on social media so that we can reach other LGBT people and help them become financially uh, independent. Uh, we will not be doing a Debt Free Guys Live next week. We're taking off for the holidays, so we will be off between Christmas and New Year's. So don't join us next week, but of course, if you have nothing to do, please search for hashtag DFG Live and uh, check out the other DFG Lives that we've done that you haven't had a chance to see yet. Yep. We will return, however, Wednesday, January 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're going to talk about a very timely topic. At the beginning of the year, everybody wants to pay off debt. Everybody wants to become debt-free. So David and I are going to revisit our uh, addition, initial book for the four principles of a debt-free life. We're going to talk about those principles. We're going to talk about the book and we're going to talk about the four podcasts and the free resources that you have access to to help achieve those principles. So don't forget to join us. But again, download the uh, worksheet above. Start working on that late stage retirement and join the Queer Money, the private Queer Money Facebook group. Let us know how that worksheet works out for you. If it's success, we want to celebrate with you. If it's not a success, if we, you have questions or concerns, let us know. We want to help make it better or help get you your magic money number. Exactly. And join us on the third as we come from a brand new location. John and I are taking our fabulous life to a new fabulous level. So we'll show off our new location. And as always, remind, we remind you to live fabulously, not fabulously broke. Thanks Happy again. Holidays. Happy holidays.